Age of Empires 4 was supposed to be the big return of the RTS genre, but let me tell you right now, it's kind of the opposite of it. In many ways, Age of Empires 4 feels like a downgrade to the Definitive Edition, Age of Empires 2, or even StarCraft 2. And if you played any of those games actively, you need to watch this video. I really wanted to avoid making this video, but the stress test really reminded me that we live in this modern pre-order era of gaming, and that is something that I really despise. So let me give you 60 reasons why you shouldn't spend $60 on this game. So a big disclaimer at the start, if you only play single player, then this video is not really going to affect your buying decision. You're probably going to get what you want out of Age of Empires 4. And to calm down all the AOE elitists in the comment section, let me just tell you, I've played AOE over 20 years ago. Yes, I'm that old. And I've played StarCraft 2 competitively for three years and AOE 2 DE for the last two years. So obviously I'm a big AOE fan and an RTS fan as well. You see in this video, I'm not even going to focus on bugs. I'm only gonna mention a few because I know that these are gonna get sorted out over the next, let's say, year or two. But I'm going to talk about the approach, the attitude, the philosophies, the game design. Some of the things that I'll mention will get fixed on launch already but it doesn't take away from the fact that 50 plus won't. Well, let's begin with the main points of contention. The first one being that this game has big shoes to fill. We're talking about the Age of Empires franchise, the legendary franchise. It's hard to make a spiritual successor of a legendary game like Age of Empires 2, or even 3 in this case, because Age of Empires 4 reminds me of 3 more than 2. The main developer is Relic Entertainment, but unfortunately, they never worked on an Age of Empires game before. They had some previous successes with Homeworld, Company of Heroes, and Warhammer. The second developer is World's Edge, and they did work on the last two definitive editions of Age of Empires that came out. Relic's latest game, however, Dawn of War 3, was a huge failure. They even had to cancel the expansion that they planned for it. Now, in Age of Empires 4, they're really trying hard to satisfy all different types of audiences from the super casual single player only to you know play once or twice a week some team games to the competitive esports and that is very hard to do especially in a real-time strategy and in my opinion relic did a terrible job marketing this game and i think even the hardcore fans of age of empires 4 that enjoy the game are gonna agree with this no real gameplay was shown up until a few days ago, so we're talking mid-September and the game is releasing at the end of October. Not to mention that this open beta, or stress test, was announced just a few days before it started, and it coincidentally happened during the same weekend as the Red Bull Wolo, which is the gigantic AoE 2 tournament. All of this might make someone think that they're a little bit scared of showing the gameplay. Now, I've obviously played this stress test and I've played the closed beta, so I have quite a few games in. And while I was playing, I constantly had the feeling that the devs were trying to reinvent the wheel. But not only that, they also didn't copy the things from the games that are done really well and that are accepted as standards in the RTS industry nowadays. As you'll see later, the mechanics in Age of Empires 4 have been dumbed down completely. One would say, well, that's great because you're going to be able to micro more like StarCraft 2 did to StarCraft. Well, there's a point where you say it's a little bit too much. Now, this leads to this game not really being esports viable in its current state, which is something that they really want to do with this game. But please, I want to remind you that we're all a little bit desperate for a proper strategy game to come out because the last one was what? Starcraft 2 or AoE 2 DE. So we definitely tend to be a little bit more forgiving with the new games that are coming out because we just want a new game to play. Unfortunately, while playing Age of Empires 4, I didn't get a single moment where I was really awed with the game or that I really felt like they did something really impressive. Maybe it was the sounds, but other than that, I was really not impressed. And now we come to the price tag, which is $60. It's more like $70 in the EU, by the way. That's hefty. That's triple A pricing right there. But people are going to say, well, AOE sold for like $50 when it came out. And I guess it did. 
But nowadays, if you're selling a $60 game, you better offer something phenomenal. And in this video, I'm trying to give you one reason per dollar on why you probably shouldn't get this game. So now that we set up the stage, let's look at the gameplay, the lack of features, and other issues. Not bugs, issues. The graphics. Let's be real. This is not a 2021 game. This is more like a 2010 game when it comes to graphics. Now, I personally don't mind, but I know a lot of people do. It gives you this strange mobile game feeling, right? If you try putting graphics on high, there's a high chance it's gonna overload your GPU. I have a 1080 Ti, which is still a decent GPU, and this game just puts it on 100% usage right away. And if you want 144 FPS, you really need to go to the lowest settings, which made the game look like not 2010, but more like 2002. Age of Empires 2D looks better than Age of Empires 4 on low settings. Now, if you look back to the first trailer, there's something that people notice right away is the high contrast team colors that the game is pushing. And I feel like it's probably necessary due to the color palettes of the game. But for some people, it's another reason why not to play the game because it makes it look cartoony. But for lacking features, let's start with no mod support, which is probably going to come in somewhere in 2022. Next one is no replays, and I haven't seen any mention of that anywhere coming in. Related to that, if you want to analyze the game you just finished, let's say you won it, but you wanted to see what your opponent was doing, you can't. You're sent straight back to lobby. There's no fog of war removal. There's no way to scroll the map to see around. You're just sent back. There is no pause feature. I wonder how tournaments are going to run. There's no ranking system publicly available. I'm sure it's going to be there on launch, but we haven't seen it yet. They haven't shown a map veto system. Now something that's probably going to shock a lot of Age of Empires 2 and StarCraft players, and that is that there's no patrol action. There's no hotkey for it. It's only the most used hotkey in the history of Age of Empires 2, and here it doesn't even exist. Talking about hotkeys, it is confirmed that even on launch, you will not be able to fully customize your hotkeys. You can only do basic rebinds and you have to use their grid system. There's also no way to bind anything to mouse buttons or to scroll up and down. A typical example would be scroll down to cycle idle villagers. Now this is a funny one. Alt key is hard bound to camera rotation. If you want to alt tab, you're probably going to move your camera a little bit. By the way, yeah, you can rotate the camera in this game because it's 3D, but you're probably never going to do that. Also, the stand ground, aka hold position, doesn't work as it should. Now, something you'll notice instantly when you start playing on your first click, there's a 0.3 second input delay lag. That's insane. It's like you're playing on Asian servers from Europe. So try microing with that and combined with the fact that it's so hard to select individual units because they kind of clump up in a weird way. Oh, we have to talk about the archers. Apparently archers shoot homing missiles in this game. It's more like Marauders in StarCraft 2. Archers in Age of Empires 2 with full upgrades still miss shots, but here they never do. Unless the target is dead. And the cool part is that they don't need any upgrades, they straight up get this ability right away in Feudal Age. There's no real way to micro against this. The fights are kind of uninteresting. Therefore, archers seem like an insane unit to have. And of course, you're going to incorporate it in every type of army that you have. And the funny part is that there's no small basic unit that directly counters archers. And all of this makes micro feel less impactful, which is obviously a bad thing for a strategy game. Another hot topic is the camera choices that they went with. The camera angle, the verticality of both buildings and terrain makes for a really strange experience while playing, at least in multiplayer. The max zoom level is relatively low, especially for team games where you get a lot of units on the screen. You really can't fit too much in a single screen. And on some maps where you zoom out fully, you get this weird fog effect and desaturation on objects that are further away which makes you want to zoom back in again. And due to extreme verticality of the terrain, your zoom level will oftentimes be less than optimal when you go over high hills, then go back down, then go up. We also have to mention the UI, which feels really sloppy. It's the first strategy game that I've played 
that has this generic non-immersive background and design of the icon. And when it comes to functionality, for example, there's no way to select individual units from the group that is currently selected. So how the hell do you micro? Let's say you have a large group of knights that you want to send to battle, but you want to send two to the left side, two to the right side before that. Well, good luck doing that without this feature. Something that I noticed is that there are no visible menu buttons in game. So if you want to get to the main menu, you have to click escape. You'll notice that you'll be clicking escape a lot during gameplay, even though you didn't want to because of reasons. And when it comes to icon design, they only have a few colors and the upgrades are the worst defenders. They almost look exactly the same. They just have a little yellow dot extra if it's a higher level upgrade. There are all kinds of icon inconsistencies all over the place and you're locking this grid system where you have five different menus that you can open at once. If you click on the market, for example, it doesn't say on the icons how much you're going to earn if you sell 100 food. You have to hover over and then wait for the tooltip to come in to tell you. There's also no way to sell large amounts all at once, so you have to spam that in the late game. Observer mode seems quite lacking and limited, but I guess they might improve that. The minimap seems extremely hard to read, and some of the icons are a little bit too big. Not to mention when you're getting attacked from multiple sides, all those red attack alerts make you see nothing but red on your minimap. There's no way to chop trees real fast, like you can in Age of Empires 2 with onagers, for example. And on Black Forest, which is in Age of Empires 4, you're stuck in these narrow tunnels throughout the whole game. Oh, I almost forgot. The shift Q is not displayed visually once you set it up. You don't really know what you sent out the villager to do. And the waypoints from the military buildings are gigantic. It's like some special event happen every time you change your rally point. And this becomes really bad once you have like 20 or 30 barracks or stables. High player count team games, for some reason, seem to be ending with wonder wins a lot of times, with 10 layers of walls and towers and castles that are almost impossible to breach in 10 minutes. There's all kinds of different mechanics that are playing into this, but I feel like this is just gonna keep happening in Age of Empires 4. Building placement, in general, in Age of Empires 4 has very little tactical importance, because it doesn't block movement on units on its edges. And finally, all of this just straight up feels like a downgrade to even Age of Empires 2, a game that came out 20 years ago, has been improved over the years, but still, it feels like a big downgrade. Uh, I really thought I wasn't gonna talk about the bugs, huh? My God, that town center bell. Ding, 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 ding. Oh man, my head is gonna explode. <laughs> <laughs> it really reminds me of Doc Disrespect, the motorcycle, the Chinese motorcycle clip. <laughs> now, why am I mentioning this one? Well, the devs had an opportunity here to intervene right away as they saw it as being an issue for, for basically everyone and apply hotfix, but they didn't. I don't know, was it the weekend? So no one's working there? They just let it go? from Friday on. In my opinion, this is a big weakness for the dev team and it shows the lack of proper decision making. It seems like there's a lot of network issues in high player account team games towards the end where you just can't issue commands as you want. Sometimes you get some resources that you just cannot click on, for example, fish or certain trees. Only if you ever try to ask for help in chat in a team game, well, get ready to wait 10 seconds for your message to appear. Let's say you want to move a unit into an unexplored area with the fog of war and you issue right click, you're not going to get any type of feedback from the game that you successfully issued that command. Now let's just wrap it up with a little mystery. There are so many hidden bonuses when it comes to eco, when it comes to unit stats that are not displayed anywhere. So at least you're going to have fun discovering all of this if you get the game. Poof. And this game is releasing in a month, guys. It is not going in alpha, in beta, in early access, in late access, in whatever other half scam a lot of devs are selling these days. It's supposed to have almost all the features ready in October. Look, again, I know they're going to add some of this stuff on release, 
but this is still a huge debacle for Relic. But I don't think we can blame only the devs. This game is, after all, published by Microsoft. Do I have to say anything else? Just look at what happened to the latest Age of Empires game that Microsoft released. Age of Empires Online. You never heard of it? Exactly my point. This game is definitely made with casuals in mind first. And I believe that the single player experience is going to be very immersive and it's going to be just fine. But this is not a competitive game. And there is no such thing as casual esports. If people compete in a tournament, they're not going to give 50% of what they got. They're going to give 100%. And this game cannot support 100%. It kind of just pulls you down and just drags you through the mud. I don't know, do I still have hope for this game? Maybe, maybe if they delay it by at least six months, then yeah, there is a chance. But during that time, they would have to redesign the game. You know, we're talking camera choices, verticality choices, add the missing features. That's not going to happen. That is it for this video, guys. I hope this helps you in deciding whether you want to get this game or not. Whether you want to spend $60, $70 on this or not. And I want to know what you think of Age of Empires 4. And if you're getting it, why are you getting it? Let me know in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next one.